Ever since making my Ronin SC Full Focus review, I've been really into macro. If you haven't seen that or the intro breakdown, I'll link it somewhere around here and in the description. But essentially, I had to really improvise to get the macro shots there. Uh, and it was a super janky setup. So I knew that I had to get something a bit more usable for future shoots. The obvious choice is to just buy a macro lens, but those can get a bit expensive. Luckily, I came across these. The little extension tubes that go between your camera and the lens, allowing any lens to focus much closer than it normally would. So are they any good? Well, here are a few things I shot with them in the last couple of weeks. So yeah, they're pretty good. I'll be making more in-depth videos about how I shot each one of these in the future. So it'll be like this macro video series. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. But this video is more about the adapters themselves. And I'll be going into exactly how these things work, showing you what's physically happening in camera. But first, let's take a look at how to use them. The ones I have here are from Viltrox and they have pins for lens control. Technically, I think that might mean that you can use them with autofocus, but that's not very useful or important. Um, what is important is aperture control. So unless you're planning on only using them with fully manual lenses, definitely get the ones with pins for lens control. They come in three parts. Each one is a different size and you can either use one or stack them to get a longer extension. The one you use will depend on the lens you're using it with and how close you want your focus. I think the best thing to do is to show you how they work with a bunch of different lenses. So that's why I have a mix of zooms and primes here and a 24 to 70 that's filming me right now. Generally, I don't really like how my lenses are such a like mess of brands and types, but for this video, it's perfect. Let's start with this little 50mm Zeiss Contax Prime. It's a vintage lens, which I converted to be EF mount, so I can use it with my cameras. Media Division made a fantastic video all about these, which I'll link down in the description. It's a bit of a long one, but 100% definitely worth a watch if you're interested in using vintage lenses. So I have it set up here on the a7 III, looking at this cool little pocket watch. And without any adapters, this is as close as we can get. So not very close, far from macro. Now, let's put on the shortest extension tube and see what happens. Now, a couple things happened. First, my close focus is much closer, but my range of focus is much smaller. So that's one of the drawbacks of these adapters versus a purpose-made macro lens, which would have that full range from macro all the way out to infinity. With this adapter, my range has gone from the original range of infinity to 45 centimeters to now 30 centimeters at far focus and 24 at close focus. So I can focus on things quite a bit closer, but I don't have as much control over where that focus is. Quick side note, that measurement is taken from the sensor. That's what the measurements on your lens refer to. And if you look at your camera, you should have this little symbol which shows you where the sensor is. Some cameras like the FS7 also have a little stick out bit to hook on a tape measure, which can then be used by focus pullers to get focus marks. But let's get back to the adapters. Let's see what happens with the medium size adapter. I think now we're really starting to get that macro effect with this lens. But with this medium size extension, the focus range is even smaller. Our infinity focus is 24 centimeter and close focus is 21. With the largest adapter, it's 20 centimeters to 19.5. So you can see how each adapter brings the focus closer, but at the same time reduces your focus range significantly. When I attach the 12mm extension onto the 36, the focus ring just stops doing much at all. You can also start seeing a lot more softness around the edges and general aberrations. The image gets darker and things just get a bit out of control. So with this particular lens, I wouldn't go any further than using the 36mm extension. But what if we go wider? I also have my 28mm contact size here, so let's put this on and see what happens. Close focus here without any adapters is 25cm. Our smallest adapter moves that focus way in to around 14cm. And the largest adapter brings the focus so close that it's almost touching the lens. So let's go wider. This is my 14mm Samyang and it's the widest lens I have. The close focus here is 28cm. So 
Let's see what happens with the smallest adapter. So this is it, the 14 mil with the shortest adapter. I have it super close um, on close focus, but even if we touch the front of the lens, it's still not in focus. So let's go to infinity. And if I bring it in, it's better, but still not quite there. So let's take it down to F22. Get some more light in there. And now we're just about able to get it in focus. Um, it's quite a cool effect, but I'd probably say this is not a very practical setup. And that brings me to my next point. It's really cool how you can adapt almost any lens to give you this super close focus because you're not limited to just one focal length or lens characteristic, but not everything will work. Some lenses will work well, others won't at all. You might also start seeing more optical artifacts and it's just a bit all over the place. So they're fun, but not very consistent. You can see that even more with zooms. This is my Tamron 24 to 70 and I have it here with the 12 mil adapter at 70 mil. But look what happens when I zoom out. It zooms out, but it also completely shifts my focus. I know this is not a parafocal lens, but this is pretty extreme. And it's kind of what we're seeing with the primes where the focus was still quite far with the 50 mil, but moved inside the lens with the 14. You can also see that the image degrades a lot the wider we go. It looks quite sharp at 70, but at 24 mil, the chromatic aberrations get pretty wild. And finally, we get to the Canon 70 to 200 f4 which out of all the lenses I tried is by far my favorite to use with the macro extension tubes. And it's the lens I used to shoot everything in the sequence at the start. The close focus on this thing is over a meter, so getting close up details is impossible without an adapter. But you can use any combination of the extension tubes and the image stays sharp. And you know how with the 24 to 70, the focus changed when I zoomed out? Well, it's the same here, but to a point where I used the zoom to focus which kind of messes with my mind, but it gets rid of the problem I had with the primes having reduced focus range. The focus ring still works and the range is tiny like with all the other lenses, but in this case it's great because I can use it to get more fine focus control. So hopefully by now you have a really good sense of what these extenders are like to use. But how do they actually work? This bit will get quite technical, but I tried to make it as visual as possible and it really helped me understand what's really going on and how it works. So it should explain it pretty well. It's much easier to show what's going on with a prime. So let's go back to that 50 mil Zeiss. To see what's really happening, I used a lens diagram and recreated that 50 mil lens in something called Ray Optics Simulator. Now it's far from perfect, but it works well enough to really illustrate how the lens extenders work. So let's see what the light is doing. You can see the light comes in, goes through the front. Some of it is blocked by our aperture and where the light is the thinnest, that's where our focus is. If I move the light around a bit, you can see how it goes in and out of focus. Now, I don't know if this is the case with all lenses, especially zooms, but as far as I know, when you move your focus, all you're doing is moving the glass that's inside the lens towards or away from the camera. When you want to focus further, the lens moves in and focusing closer moves the lens away. The two lines here are more or less how much the lens would need to move to get from infinity to close focus. So if we move the light closer, it obviously goes out of focus, but we can fix that by increasing the distance between the lens and the sensor with an extender. Now the minimum focus is much closer, but if you look here, we have to move the lens away as much as the entire focus range of that lens, even though we didn't move the light that much. So the closer something gets, the more distance there needs to be, and it seems to be exponential. So if I half the distance of the light to the front element, I need to double the distance between the lens and the sensor. So that explains why not all lenses are macro. They would have to be much longer, and most of the time, that's just not worth it. Let's bring the light even closer, because I want to show you one last thing. See how much distance there is now, and compared to that, how much the lens can move? This is why the more extensions you put on, the less focus range you get. I hope that all made sense. I'll make the file available to download if you want to play with the lens simulator yourself. And again, that was not a perfect recreation of the lens, and I'm by no means an expert on lens optics. 
I just wanted to have a visual way of showing what's going on and I really hope I managed to do that. Oh, and really quickly, I focused mostly on extension tubes in general, but in case of these ones in particular, they're mostly cheap plastic and the fit isn't great. In my case, the 36mm extender is super tight on the lens mount, so getting a lens on and off of there is really kind of difficult. But they get the job done and they're pretty cheap, so it's what I'd expect. Um, they're definitely worth it for the price. So that's extension tubes. If you want to get into the world of macro but don't have a big budget, like me, I think they're perfect. And even if you already have a dedicated macro lens, I think they're worth picking up too, just to like experiment with and see what happens when you put them on different lenses. And yeah, they can be pretty finicky, especially when you use them with primes. So it's not like they're gonna make actual macro lenses redundant, but you can get some amazing footage with them and they're a lot of fun. So I would definitely recommend getting a set. But that's it for this one. Hit the like button if you learned something new. Like I said earlier, I'll be releasing videos showing exactly how I shot those macro shots at the start. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss those. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.